Great Blue by Lydia Mack is a realistic painting of a blue heron which frequently visits her home. The media of the painting is oils over acrylics on stretched canvas. In the painting, the heron is gracefully standing on the shores of a pond with a variety of flora in the background. Color is an important aspect of the painting, allowing the bright blues of the heron to contrast with the deep greens and yellows of the vegetation in the background. The textures of the heron's feathers are precise and vivid, and the water in the foreground seems to be rippling with movement. Value is presented in the varying shades of blue in the, ferons, in the heron's feathers. The emphasis on the heron in the middle of the painting leads the viewer's eyes directly to the vibrancy of the colors. Movement is used in the piece to create a sense of realism, allowing viewers to feel like they are truly viewing the heron for themselves. I think that Mrs. Mack is trying to convey the true serenity and beauty of nature. When I look at this painting, I feel immersed in it, like I am watching the heron for myself. I feel as if I can see the movement of the water and the strong but elegant stature of the blue heron. I can feel the slight breeze over the water, causing the grass in the background to move. I can hear the wind rustling through the bushes. Personally, I think that this is an excellent piece of artwork which successfully portrays the, cru the true calmness and beauty of nature. Great Blue would be an addition, a great addition to our school because it reminds us of the beauty of nature, a beauty that we sometimes forget to acknowledge. Past, Present, Future by Benjamin Thomas is a realistic painting that depicts a woman watering a single plant in an otherwise desolate landscape. Mr. Thomas uses color to contrast the delicate green plant signifying life and growth with a harsh red-brown landscape. Space is utilized to show how small the plant is in comparison to the rest of the painting. Contrast is extremely important in the piece and it is prevalent in various forms including color and size. The emphasis is on the woman watering the plant, which shows how important it is to sustain every last bit of life on earth. Through this piece, Mr. Thomas tries to explain how impactful a single action can be in such a complicated situation. He is trying to say that every effort counts in maintaining nature's fragile balance. When looking at this piece, a feeling of urgency is evoked within me, one that compels me to try to make a difference in the world and try to protect our home. If viewers were actually to be a part of the painting, they would be able to feel the harsh effects of climate change and they would, could, they would be able to understand the struggle that the plant is facing to try to stay alive. I think this piece was masterfully created and it successfully formed sparks in people's minds. I think that past, present, future would be a great addition to our school because it serves as a reminder that every effort counts no matter the situation. By painting outside on a bright fall day, artist Carrie Borio created the piece Breathe using pastel colored acrylic paints. Mrs. Borio gained her knowledge of art by taking classes at the Carnegie Institute when she was younger and also took classes in the fundamentals at the Columbus College of Art and Design as she got older. She obtains much of her insp inspiration from nature as she enjoys painting outdoors. Mrs. Borio enjoys the gorgeous color palettes, interesting patterns, and abundance of light that comes with creating art outside. When asked what inspired her piece, Breathe, Mrs. Borio responded by reflecting on how life goes by in a blur of busy schedules and nonstop demands for attention. She wanted to create a piece of artwork that caused the viewers to slow down, come to their senses, admire the visually appealing painting, and just breathe. She noted that her art was about living slower and savoring life while taking a closer look about, at what the art was about. When I look at this piece, I see a beautiful blue sky with fluffy white clouds. I admire this piece greatly because it is soothing to the eye. Its simplicity is what makes it so appealing. I believe that our school lacks a piece of art that requires students to be present and simply just breathe. This painting would be the perfect addition to our school's art collection. This alluring piece called Hindsight by Heather Heitzen Rider utilizes intensely colored oil paints and the contorted images created by reflective mylar to symbolize the chaotic unplanned circumstances in life. By using progressively intricate layers of oils, which can take weeks to months depending on the piece, she was able to create a bright and emotionally charged painting portraying the struggle of finding the courage to move forward and learn from that chaos. Mrs. Heitzen Rider typically establishes her desired aesthetic in this case, incorporating her friend and fellow artist from Edinburgh University of Pennsylvania as a focal point of the piece, and she takes photographs of the enchanting scenes that she plans to paint. This resulted in the beautifully realistic style of hindsight, which was deservedly published in Picture Magazine, 
Poet Artist Magazine, and Minus 37 blog, as well as featured at the Westmoreland Art Museum. Mrs. Heitzenrader uses her talents to instruct figurative writing, drawing and painting classes at the Pittsburgh Center of the Arts and Media, and is also a scenic artist coordinator for Scarehouse. Sunrise Return is a vivid oil painting by Rachel Wheeler capturing the welcoming Pennsylvania sunrise after having returned from a trip away from home. Ms. Wheeler experimentally combined layers of her favorite medium oil paints on a board surface to develop depth and rich hues in her piece to emphasize the fleeting natural beauty that can be found throughout a seemingly mundane reality. Ms. Wheeler's personal artistic style of realism mixed with illustration allows the viewer to emotionally connect with her artwork as well as her overarching theme of capturing the precious, simple moments within everyday life. Her passion for art is evident in her work and in her past. She grew up with a love of drawing and later graduated summa cum laude from St. Vincent College with a bachelor's in studio arts. Now her recent achievements include acceptance into the Mr. Fred Rogers juried exhibit, a solo exhibit called First Light, and the creation of her own art business, Rachel Wheeler Arts. In her piece, Homestead, Susan Reeves worked with acrylic paint due to the blendability and fast drying process. Her meaning behind this beautiful piece is that many farmers find that working in the land is an important piece of their family history, and they want to carry it over to the next generation. Everybody needs to enjoy the land we've been given. Mrs. Rubis' father used to say, God isn't making any more land. Her use of contrast between the green scenery and the red barn really draws in the viewer's attention. The barn is angled so that the door is open, welcoming nature, which gives a good look at an asymmetrical style. Mrs. Rubis's brush strokes are almost unnoticeable, which gives a clean, realistic look. Mrs. Rubis, an alumni of Greater Latrobe, is an artist without any formal training, except exploring her creativity by being a hairstylist for 35 years. Her motto has always been, there is nothing in this world that you cannot do if you truly want. And I believe that everyone should think of this while going on through life. Mrs. Rubis enjoys being inspired by colors around her, whether it be in the setting or in a picture. Mrs. Rubis is truly blessed to have found a way to produce artwork that she is passionate about. She works in a variety of mediums, including pen, watercolor, acrylic, and mixed media. Walking through the halls of Greater Latrobe and seeing this painting will remind students not to waste time and resources that they have been given. Going Home by Pamela Beatty represents the beauty that surrounds us. Most people can relate to the metaphor of the tall snow and tracks plowing through the fresh powder and the struggles of being in the tough snow, and then finally being rewarded by arriving home. As we are struggling through a long, hard journey daily to get to the place where we will find comfort and safety, we are going home. Looking at this painting, people should feel a rush of relaxation and a sense of reassurance that everything will be okay. The detail in this piece is immaculate. The brush strokes are invisible, which makes this artwork extremely realistic. The plain colors and the light pink clouds in the sky blend perfectly to give a calming look. The way Mrs. Beatty balanced the, this painting emphasizes the main point, which is the rough tracks leading home. In this piece, Mrs. Beatty used oil on a linen panel, which is her preferred medium. She started out with a light wash of paint and built up layers. Mrs. Beatty takes a lot of photographs of her landscapes that she later uses to generate pencil sketches. After she is pleased with her sketch, she moves onto a linen board and starts light laying in light washes of color and building up areas of thicker paints over time. Mrs. Beatty graduated from the Art Institute of Pittsburgh in 1982, finished her undergraduate in biology at Pitt, and continued her graduate studies with a doctorate in immunology from Pitt School of Medicine. However, she's a self-taught oil painter. She enjoys painting in her free time as well as wood sculpting and chainsaw carving. Having this piece hung up in the halls of Greater Latrobe would give students the important message that they never get a moment back. They should keep their heads up and track through the struggles they are going through until they reach their award. Southside Slopes by James Kozak is a relief sculpture of the iconic neighborhood in Pittsburgh. Mr. Kozak uses muted and earth-toned glazes to capture what he calls the feeling of the city once described as hell with the lid off. As a former steel mill worker, Mr. Kozak has a deep appreciation for Pittsburgh and its heritage. He explains how Southside Slopes is one of Pittsburgh's most unique neighborhoods. Perched in the hills, it offers a panoramic view of the Monongahela River and the beautiful city skyline. 
Today, it is a tourist attraction, offering narrow winding streets, century-old frame houses, friendly people, and many, many long staircases. Mr. Kozak wishes, with this piece, to form a relationship between the past memories and the present state of this neighborhood. The use of this specific medium is especially intriguing, as it adds physical depth to the piece, really bringing it to life. While oil paint is usually Mr. Kozak's choice medium, he clarifies that he chose to depict the hills in a relief because it had to be as unique as the hillside neighborhood itself. I believe that Southside Slopes would be an excellent addition to Greater Latrobe's collection because of this extraordinary quality. Dipali Rabadia's oil painting Boats at Lahaina, Hawaii is a beautiful depiction of a fleet of boats docked at a pier, complemented by a cotton candy sky behind them. Mrs. Rabadia's bold brushstrokes and broad spectrum color palette add visual interest and form. The artist explains that this piece is inspired by vacation photos from her trip to Hawaii and states that, when I see these boats, they all have unique colors, shape, style, and different dimensions. I love to have a unique perspective in my paintings. And she does just that by highlighting not only the boats themselves, but their opulent reflections in the water where they are floating. Mrs. Rabadia earned an MBA in marketing in India, and she moved to the United States with her family in 2002, working for logistics companies in Los Angeles and New York. She now loves to read, cook, and paint daily in her home studio. I think that boats at Lahaina, Hawaii would fit in very nicely with Greater Latrobe's art collection and that it could offer to the students a little slice of paradise every day. Barefootin' by Patricia Dickin is a realistic oil painting where a young, easygoing woman can be seen holding her sandals in her right hand while walking barefoot on a sunny day. She's in no rush and is simply enjoying the moment without distraction. You may notice how vividly her warm complexion contrasts with the cool background, making her stand out as the main focal point. To me, this piece brings serenity and peace, envisioning that I myself am this woman walking on a sunny day. It is a great distraction to the busy reality we live in. In Michael Swan's Echo, he pays incredible attention to detail, particularly in the woman's face, hair, and clothes, with great depth in the shading. This piece is painted on linen with oil. The woman's expression as she's listening to something, not meant to be heard, is extremely realistic and proportional. The use of very natural colors, especially in the light pink of the dress, the woman's red hair, and her darker pink lips, allows for shading to stand out as well as add to the realism of the painting. Mr. Swan's process with this work is very laid back, drawing sketches and seeing what works, although this process allows for a lot of creative freedom. Overall, Mr. Swan and Echo creates an extremely well put together realistic piece of art. Michael Swan's Savannah Diner is a realistic painting of a diner across the street from the house he was renting in Savannah. The painting of what can be considered a classic diner, likely untouched in years, has a realistic impressionist style to it. The use of bold colors to create shading in areas, particularly the sky and ground, and the way in which some of the paint is blended on the canvas seems to add to the impressionist style. The use of a linear perspective to create a proportional representation of the diner so very much so adds to the realism of this piece. Mr. Swan's process with this was to take pictures from the diner from multiple angles and use the photos as a reference. Mr. Swan's realistic impressionist style and the fact this painting was derived from an actual place that holds a special value to the artist makes this piece incredibly interesting. Cake Job is a painting by Robert Huckstein that tells the story of a painter rolling frosting onto an Oreo cake twice his size. The painter wields a long-handled paint roller dipping from a paper condiment cup 
and leaves streaks of wet paint behind him. Huxbean pulls inspiration for much of his subject matter from things he and his wife have cooked or picked up from the grocery store during quarantine. Sometimes these items end up in a painting rather than in our stomachs, he confesses. While he was working on this piece in particular, he was also painting one of the rooms in his house, and the idea of combining the two concepts struck him in hopes of making the viewers chuckle. He works primarily in oil paint on canvas as he finds this allows him to manipulate his work into a more realistic manner using subtle value changes. He credits the development of his style to experimentation along with heavy influences from the 1960s and 70s photorealists and of course, lots of practice. Mr. Huckstein took a few drawing and painting courses in college but is mainly self-taught and draws from art books and studies the work of artists such as Da Vinci, Caravaggio, and Norman Rockwell. Personally, I find the realistic nature of this piece to be ironic and witty, which would add a bright touch to our hallways. As previously mentioned, Mr. Huckstein enjoys conveying stories through his work using things from his daily life or objects that spark his interest. Sugar and Spice is another still life example of his love for cooking, or in this case, ingredients that add another layer of flavor to all our favorite foods. Tabasco, ketchup, sugar, salt, pepper, and Dijon mustard can be found in almost any kitchen or restaurant table. This piece is similar to the last in that it has a rather plain background, which can be interpreted as a dark wooden countertop against a yellow painted wall. However, this piece uses more vibrant colors in its focal point, whereas Cake Job had more neutral colored focal points, which contrasted the backgrounds. The familiarity of the content, as well as local ties with Heinz Ketchup, makes this piece an excellent choice for this year's addition to our art collection. This next piece is an oil painting titled Route 982 by Dorian Curry. A beautiful impressionistic scenery is depicted upon a lovely farm. Mrs. Curry painted an arrangement of buildings in the background with flowers in the foreground. There are various contrasts of colors, such as the red barn and house against the green trees and garden. Perhaps some of you recognize this working farm near Pleasant Unity. Mrs. Curry shows the beauty of our area and the hard work and pride that goes into owning a farm. When I look at this piece, it reminds me of true beauty in my area and gives me feelings of peace. Thank you, and this concludes our Dozen presentations.